this is what my RV looks like. Oh my gosh. It's a mess. It's beautiful. No, Louis. Louis is working on my RV, so I'm making him Aloha chicken and a coconut pie in the crock pot. Because my solar is broken. Yeah. What? Come here. And he covered the holes, installer cut. He covered those up with that. So no water can get in there anymore. Because we are using AGM batteries. All right, so we're driving because we're running some errands. And the, well, the question of the day is my solar install because as you know, I've been having a lot of problems with my solar, which one whole side of my RV doesn't work. And that happened after the solar install. On and off a couple of times before my solar install, I did have a problem with the fuse, but I would change the fuse out and it would fix the problem. The entire side of my RV, the driver's side of the camper would work. But somewhere after in April of last year, I got the solar and then probably around um, a month or two later is when it stopped working that whole side of the RV doesn't work so what I just said to Lewis is is it possible now that we have totally disconnected all of the old solar stuff we removed all that wiring which was a mess it was all chopped up wires some of the gauges were not appropriate for the amount of electricity that was coming through there now that there's no solar connected if I plug in my RV to the wall to the actual short power, uh, sure, short power can we try to see if that fuse will work and run the whole side? Because that way we will know before the install that it was working. My my thing is, and I'm no expert. I, I just, I, I did my van. Everything works in my van that I did myself. And I'm the only one who worked on my van right. regarding 12 volt stuff. So right up front, I am no expert. So having said that, I was telling Lydia, I'm not certain that if she plugs um, her camper to shore power that any of her 12 volt stuff will work because the 12 volt stuff in her camper should be connected to the batteries even though she's connected to shore power the shore power is powering her 120 volt system and is charging up the batteries and anything that's 12 volt is getting its power from the batteries okay, because just just so you know because we also removed the outside battery so because I'm going to put in his he right gave now me, we have no power whatsoever right. from any batteries right there's the no solar, batteries connected nothing is, is connected the marine battery that I bought in my video last summer the marine battery is a really good battery it works great but we removed it because now I have two lifeline batteries that are going in they're going to be controlling the solar so in that storage space on the outside where my original lance battery goes is going to be a storage uh, space so right now there's no battery in there so when we get back you think we can try that and see if we can do that we can plug it in test. we can plug it in and plug it in and try I, to put I the am, fuse in I am 99% sure that it's not going to work okay. unless unless the camper Unless the way they wire, and there's like a million wires yeah, in Yeah, there. there's a lot of, but, we, but, we, way, but you've done a good job calling uh, Lance, and they've been very right, helpful in, in right. walking but us unless, through the problem. Unless the way they wire it, they mm -hmm. wire it so that you get your short power, and the short power, even without any batteries, charges up all the 12 volt devices, everything that's, right. all the 12 volt uh, USB plug-ins and, every, and the, everything. Right. So if that's the case, I mean, then they have some bypass, something that I'm not familiar with. Right. Because I didn't build the camper. And, and if you look in there, there's like millions of wires. And everything was, all those wires were put in place before the cabinets were put in place. So they were easy to access. Now it's almost impossible to go in there. Yeah, it's and, very, and it's a and, tight space. Right, it's, it's a small space right. for a big guy too because he's over six feet. So I'm not over six feet. How big are you? Well, thank you though. <laughs> I'm five ten, but I'm over six feet. For a girl my size, you think you're six feet? <laughs> anyway, so that's what's going on with the camper dilemma. We're still working on the camper, trying to get it all resolved because I really want to. Who's driving, run. Lydia? I want to run the Who's fridge. Driving? I want to run the Lydia, fridge. Bring it over here. Solar. Bring the camera over here. Who's driving? I'm I not driving. Are you driving? Well, I thought you were driving. It's um, I'm not actually doing pretty good considering the fact you're not even using the steering wheel. Anyway, we'll 
do the test later and see if it works. And the reason I want to do the test is because if if the, if there's still an electrical problem after it's all said and done, I'm gonna have to take it to a professional. So I want to be able to. Well, well, when I'm, I'm not done. I'm gonna be able to write down, take notes of everything that we did, so that he knows we tried this and we tried this and we tried this, and that will help him figure things out. Uh, you said. Raise your hand and uh, get him to talk. My eyes, my eyes. All right. Okay. You didn't explain why. Why? The, the reason why Lydia is. is she forgot the why of the problem is there's one particular fuse. I don't know if you mentioned that. So if you did, I'm sorry, but I don't remember you mentioning that. There's one particular fuse that's giving us problems, and that fuse powers uh, one side of her camper. Um, in the beginning, you would it would go out, and we would replace it, and it would be fine for a while. Now, I as soon as you about all as, this and when I, I started I, this vlog, but go ahead, Lewis. Well, I don't know if you mentioned that, but in case when you Again, when you do Lewis. the editing, if you, if you didn't hear yourself saying that, maybe then you're going to use this. So now it doesn't matter what size fuse I put in there, even a 30 amp fuse, and I think that's only what a 15 or a 10 amp thing. It's a 15. Amp. A 15. So I, I tried. And even I've a, tried the 20. I tried amp. the 30 amp fuse and it would still blow so there's something in there that's not working right and I don't know if I can fix that yeah I'll try but I'm not sure right so stay tuned because we're gonna try to figure it out and if not we're gonna have to take it to somebody to be fixed and hopefully they can solve the problem but hopefully I can fix it hopefully yeah hopefully we'll all get it done but as I said I'm but, not Lan but I do want to say that Lance is really every time you've called Lance in California they've always answer the phone they don't you know you get somebody right away and it doesn't matter that my rv is i'm a th the third owner and it doesn't matter that I'm right, my rv is from 2008 they don't ask any questions they will answer your question no matter what for your lens and they have technicians there on electrical and solar they will give you answers right away they don't you know and they don't know something they'll put you on hold and they'll find out and I love that you don't get a lot of customer service like that. I mean, it's easy for a company to sell you an RV and forget about you and not care, especially when you're doing things to the RV that are not original with them. You know, you're well, adding solar and I you're doing it yourself and not, this and that, and they're actually being just, very helpful. Let's just make some. I'm not. They're not guiding me through the uh, right. process that I'm doing. Right. But they're answering I, I've questions. Only, I've only asked uh, a couple questions regarding some of the setup. With the uh, with a camper, yeah. the way the cables are, you know, like for example, the other day I asked them because on the manual it's it was showing me that the cables were going directly from the generator to the to the batteries. That that's what the, the schematic shows. But I just wanted to make sure that that was the case, so I called them up, and they first they said no, and then they they checked and okay, yeah, uh, that's correct. It goes directly from the generator to the batteries. And then I'm like, okay, so what's controlling the amount of charge into the into the batteries? And they said, well, so far this is the way the generator works. The generator will trickle charge into the batteries, and so far we never had a problem where somebody called saying uh, our batteries got burned up or blown up or or melted or whatever because too much power went into them from the generator. So that was one question that I had the other day. I just wanted to make sure that that was how it worked right, and they were because able. I have to extend the cable another 16 feet to go to the new batteries. Right. So they and they were very helpful. So anyway, guys, if you want to watch, if you want to watch the solar install, as Lewis is going to start putting the videos on his channel, and he's going to be doing the solar and explaining everything that he's doing. Go to his channel. The link is below, and you can watch all those videos of him step by step removing the old solar, putting in the new solar, and, f and and troubleshooting the problems that I have there. We'll talk about more of that next time, but now There's we're gonna to have come. to go pick up some solar stuff Solar that we need. equipment, that's why we're here at the post office, because we, we have to pick up a lot of solar stuff. We've been getting solar stuff delivered almost every day. Hey guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, please share it, and please subscribe. Follow us on social media.